Swap instruction is similar to the test transit instruction. It is also a low level hardware instruction which is atomic or indivisible. And this function operates on a global boolean variable named log which is initialized to false. If log is false, it means the critical section is free. Any process who is trying to enter the critical section can enter the critical section by setting lock to true. And if lock is true, if any process tries to enter the critical section, it cannot until lock is false. And in addition to this global boolean variable lock, each and every process has its own local boolean variable named key. If any process wishes to enter inside the critical section, it will start executing the entry section code for the critical section by setting key to true. And then the process perform a swap function with this key value and the lock value. Here, the aim of the process is actually to receive a false value from the lock to the key and to transfer this true value from the key to the lock and enter inside the critical section. Because if lock is false, it means the critical section is free. So as a result of the swap function, if key receives a false value, it means the process can enter the critical section. Along with entering the critical section, the process will set the lock to true by transferring this true value from the key to the lock. And we know that the swap function swaps the contents of these two boolean variables. It returns nothing, so void swap, since we are changing the actual contents of these variables, we can transfer these variables along with their address to the function. Now variable A points to the same memory location key is pointing to and variable B points to the same memory location lock is pointing to. Now boolean temp equals A, this will transfer the content of A or key to some temporary boolean variable temp. Then A equals B will transfer the content of B or lock to the key or A variable. Then B equals temp will transfer the content of the temp or transfer the content from the key to the lock. So we received a false value from the lock and then transferred the true value from the key to the lock. Now the process P0 can enter inside the critical section. And while P0 is inside the critical section, suppose P1 tries to execute the swap function with key set to true. As a result of the swap function, the key will receive a true value from the lock and transfer true value to the lock. So when key receives a true value from the lock, it means the critical section is occupied. So as long as key equals true, the process will never try to enter the critical section. It will keep on waiting in the while loop by executing the swap function. At any time when lock is false, that false value will be transferred to the key. When key becomes false, the process can break the while loop and can enter inside the critical section by setting lock to true. And when a process exits the critical section, it will set lock equals false so that any other process who execute the swap function will receive a false value in its key and can enter the critical section. Now let's see whether this solution satisfies mutual exclusion. Suppose we have two processes P0 and P1. Lock is initialized to false. P0 needs to enter the critical section. It will execute the entry section code by setting key to true. 
Since key is true, swap instruction is executed one. As a result, the false value from the lock will be transferred to the key and this true value from the key will be transferred to the lock. So key received a false value. Since key becomes false, the while loop breaks and the process will enter inside the critical section. And the lock is already set to be true. Now P0 is inside the critical section. While P0 is inside the critical section, suppose P1 needs to enter the critical section. It will also execute the entry section code by setting key to true. Since key is true, it executes the swap function 1. As a result, the true value from the lock is transferred to the key and the true value from the key is transferred to the lock. So the key received a true value from the lock. As a result, the process cannot break the while loop. It will keep on executing the swap instruction within the while loop as long as the key is true. Because the lock is true, so key will keep on receiving a true value from the lock and the process will keep on waiting in the while loop for lock to be false. So P1 will not be able to enter inside the critical section. So if any one process is inside the critical section, lock will be true. So any process who is trying to enter the critical section will receive that true value in their key and they will not be able to enter inside the critical section. Moreover, the swap instruction is atomic or indivisible, so there is no chance that in between these instructions a preemption will occur. Also, if two processors in a multiprocessor environment, if two processor tries to execute try to execute these instructions simultaneously, then they will be executed sequentially. Suppose P0 and P1 try to execute the swap instruction at the same time, then they will be executed sequentially, either P0 first then P1 or P1 first then P0. So there is no chance that two processes access the lock variable at the same time. As a result, mutual exclusion is guaranteed by the solution. And what about progress? A process who is in the reminder section will not try to set the lock by executing the swap instruction. So a process who is in the reminder section is not going to block any process who is wishing to enter inside the critical section. And what about bounded weight? Consider this case. Here, P0 is inside the critical section. While P0 is inside the critical section, P1 made a try to enter the critical section, but it could not. Suppose after some time again, P0 got the processor. Now P0 completed the critical section. Now lock is set to false. Then P0 executed the reminder section. It completed the reminder section and P0 needs to enter the critical section again. And suppose P0 is still having the processor. P1 never got the processor. P0 is having some priority over P1. Now P0 can and execute the entry section code by setting its key to true and receiving a false value from the log. P0 can enter inside the critical section again. Thus, while P1 is waiting, P0 is given the second chance to enter the critical section. And this can happen any number of times. So once a process wishes to enter the critical section, there is no limit to the number of times the other process is given chance to enter the critical section. Otherwise, there is no bound to the waiting time of this process, so this solution doesn't ensure bounded weight.